Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the relevance of sword training in the modern day context. Okay. So a lot of times uh, people will ask me, you know, is it likely that we will ever go back to, you know, fighting with swords uh, for self-defense? Okay. Uh, and, and this is usually during one of like my gun training classes, right, because I'm a, I'm a full-time gun instructor. Um, and I tell those people, well, you know that there's a lot of places in this society that we can't bring our guns in to protect ourselves, right? So we're relatively defenseless. Um, you know, so if you have, if you're able to develop some other weapon skills, it might really be useful because, you know, using any weapon is better than using just your bare hands. Well, and then people will say, well, usually in those places that I'm um, not allowed to go with my gun, I'm not allowed to bring a three foot sword, right? Uh, well, I tell people, well, Here's the thing, this is not just a sword, right? This is basically a, a three foot piece of steel, right? And this is going to move in a way that's very similar to other pieces of metal or wood that are long like this, okay? So a lot of people think that uh, they can just pick up a baseball bat or a pipe and be able to fight with that just because at some point, uh, you know, they were basically striking some tree or something with a baseball bat, right? Um, but here's the thing, the tree was not trying to hit them back, the tree was not moving. Uh, if you're going up against somebody that has a similar weapon, let's say baseball-like weapon, and they're trying to hit you back or block or fight you, it's not as easy as you think, all right? This is a lesson that I learned uh, when I went to my very first sword training practice about 17 years ago. Uh, because I thought I was going to go in there and I was going to be awesome, right? Because, hey, I had been practicing hitting a pell with my sword. A pell is basically a punching bag for swords. Um, and I thought I was going to be great, right? But all of a sudden, like, I'm up against somebody that is hitting me back, trying not to get hit, blocking. Not that easy, okay? Uh, it takes a minimal of about two years to get semi-competent. Not good. Semi-competent uh, with long weapons, right? And when I say long weapons, I mean just anything that is long like this, okay? So here's the thing. These two weapons over here are going to move in a similar way, okay? Because, you know, this is a long sword. Now, this sword was designed uh, primarily to be used from, from horseback by knights, okay? So you notice it's, it's got a long blade that's flat, but it's got a parallel edge. So a lot of the weight of the sword is down towards the end over here. And the reason for that is because if you're on horse, right, and the horse is moving forward, you're using the momentum of the horse to strike forward, okay? So the horse is creating momentum for you so you can either strike forward or strike down at people on the ground, okay? So that's, that's where this type of a sword really, you know, uh, is beneficial. However, uh, a lot of times knights were on the ground, right? So they would have had to develop techniques to swing this on the ground. So here's the, here's the issue with this. Because this sword is kind of blade heavy, right? You can't just punch this out like that, right? And be able to generate enough force. So I have to generate the force down here. Basically, the, lo the legs are... You know, this is the, the, the main engine of your body. So what I'm doing is I'm using my legs to generate force. So, you know, like if I'm doing this with my arms, that's very tiring. Doing this with the legs, I, you know, I can do this for a long time. Or rotational cuts, right? If you notice, if I'm going like this, right, I'm not doing that just to look uh, cool. What I'm doing is I'm using the momentum of the sword to come down and make a strike, okay? So in order for this to hit uh with any power you gotta kind of hit at the right time so there's a timing issue so for example if i start swinging the sword and somebody closes in on me before i get a chance to extend it okay that's it's not i'm not going to have enough time to generate power um and what's going to happen is the, 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 the strike even if it lands is, is not going to be effective because remember this is not a lightsaber right you know just you know even though this is a sharp sword you know, just touching this on somebody is not going to cut somebody's arm off, okay? Um, you have to put some velocity behind it. So if somebody's closing in on me, one option is to step back as I strike, okay? Because that's going to give me the space to generate the power that I need to land it. So I got this sword here that is going to move in a very similar manner to this. So again, this crowbar here, both of these things weigh about two and a half pounds. This crowbar is a little too heavy for me to just punch out like yeah i can kind of do it but i'm not that fast with it when i do that 
and also what's happening is uh it gets really tiring right if i try to make lots of you know so with this i'm a lot more efficient generating the power from the legs you can see how i'm able to do that while using rotational cuts right um so again there's an issue of timing a lot of times i'll see people grab something like this and they're just making figure eights um you know that, that's not enough you have to be able to time it um you know somebody's going to also be attacking you you know you you have to um you know you have to make the block and basically use the uh you know you you know be able to recover from that block and go into a strike of your own okay so uh, and this isn't going to be a detailed video about how to use these type of weapons right um but i'm just basically introducing the idea so uh so these two weapons over here you know they, they kind of match up in terms of how they're going to move okay uh with both of these weapons because they're blade heavy i have to generate power from the legs or i have to make a rotational cut uh, in order to generate enough power so here i have a different sword if you look at this sword this one has more of the weight back here it's a little bit shorter this is really optimized for fighting on foot okay so with this type of a sword because there's it's uh uh, there's less weight up here you know i can fight this as a box right you know, i can sit here you know and i can i can i can make cuts like that that's what this sword is optimized for you know i can make rotational cuts but i don't need to right i can just box this out i can make really quick cuts with this so this is going to move really similar to this okay okay so again with i can make a rotational cut but i really don't need to you know so these two these two weapons are going to move in a very similar manner okay um and then lastly i've got this rapier so again each each of these three swords move entirely differently okay so this sword here i have a very long thin blade uh this sword over here even if it has a sharp edge on it it just does not have enough mass to be able to hit any of the large bones right and be able to do much effect however with a tip on this right if this had a uh, if the tip was present i would be able to stab into a foot and basically go completely through the shoe all the way into the into the ground right because so this is optimized for thrusting now i can use cuts uh first of all to beat somebody else's blade out of the way or to hit somebody on the fingers maybe on the face uh some of the but especially on the fingers right so for the purpose of this video um we're going to talk about hitting somebody on the fingers because if somebody's holding a sword and you manage to make a cut at their fingers right right it's gonna hurt okay they're gonna uh fingers are very sensitive to being hit uh they're gonna there's a good chance that if you hit them on the hand they're gonna drop their weapon right so fighting with this type of a sword is very similar to a knife fight okay so a lot of you guys are aware that knife fights tend to be very dangerous uh often resulting with both people being stabbed okay uh because the typical people that are not trained in knife fighting you know you're gonna have one guy stabbing up here the other guy stabbing down here so they're both just attacking without defending each other um which is actually a similar problem that existed in period right in, in during the renaissance with this type of a sword with untrained people okay untrained people will do the same thing right you give them a sword like this one guy will stab high the other guy will stab lows both guys get dead okay so uh with this type of a sword you have to basically um you know first deal with the other person's blade you know get that out of your way and then safely attack okay so the same concept applies knife fighting okay if somebody's closing in on me with a with a knife okay i'm going to strike the fingers okay and here's the thing forget about the edge size of this right if i use the back edge against the hand over here that hurts okay just using the back edge forget about using the cutting edge just whacking somebody with the back edge will usually get them to drop the knife okay so if i can maintain distance get them to extend their hand attack the hand that's going to make them drop the weapon so same exact concept with with this if i can cut into somebody's hand get them to drop the weapon i can then follow my my, my thrust so these two weapons are, are, are very similar in the way they would be used the only difference is this one is shorter right so with this one over here okay you've got a sword how long is this sword 
All right, so you got a blade here that is 36 inches long, okay, uh, versus the 12 inches of this. So you say, hey, it's only a 12 inch knife. We don't think of this as a as just a 12 inch knife, okay? Because this is let's close this up. This is a 12 inch knife at the end of my arm. Okay, so that's a total of about 32 inches right there, okay? You know, from the blade, from the tip, all the way to my to my shoulder. So I got 32 inches uh, to play with here. And ideally, I want to, you know, I don't want somebody to get close enough to me to be able to stab me with their knife. If I can strike the hands, okay, it, that will usually cause enough pain, all right? You don't even have to, we're not even talking about cutting a finger off. Again, use the back edge of it. If, you're, if you have been hammering a nail and you, and you basically you hit your finger with a hammer, you know how much it hurts. It, it generally gets people to drop whatever they're holding, right? It's almost involuntary. So if somebody's coming in, you whack them across the hand with this, be it front edge or back edge, you know, now they don't have a knife, you got a knife, um, and you're able to continue to fight. And I've, I've, you know, there's, again, I don't wanna get too deep into the details of how to knife fight, um, but uh, I just wanna make you guys understand that there's a lot of similarity between swords and and other weapons that we would typically that, that we typically might have access to uh in an area where we may not have our guns okay so these two type of weapons the techniques some of the techniques not all the techniques but some of the techniques that i would use with this will work on this with this type of a weapon here with this type of a sword some of the techniques that i would use with this type of a sword are going to work really good with a hammer right which again is you know, something that I can, uh, you know, fight a boxing style of, of, of swinging a sword with, okay? Um, and then you got something like a Type X like this, which basically requires either hip rotation, you know, either, either rotation or, 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 or swinging the hips. Again, this is something that I have to build up some momentum um, in order to get this sword moving. And again, it's, you know, it's not just a question of being able to strike because here's the thing, any competent fighter that you fight is going to block the first shot, okay? Or they're going to avoid it, okay? So, so the purpose of the first, second, third shot is so that you can get the fourth shot, okay? So, you know, so all these other shots are setups. The first two or three shots are a setup so that you can get, so that you can get your the final blow, okay? Um, so again, normally when when I put people on swords for the first time, putting them, put them in armor, give them a sword, they expect that they're just gonna be able to one off the person that they're fighting, and that's not the case at all. Okay, so uh, something I wanted to share with you guys as far as the relevance of, of sword training in the modern day context, uh, yes, it's very relevant, especially in areas where you're not allowed to bring guns. Uh, thank you very much, I'll talk to you soon.